Hi everyone, and welcome to the Ableton Live Survival Guide and part two of the EQ3 tutorial. Last time we went over converting the EQ3 into a powerful multiband compressor. So if you haven't watched part one yet, I suggest you do right away. Today we'll be manipulating the EQ3 that enables us to do spectral processing on our bass. I'll get into what this is and why it's a huge deal in a moment. But first I'd like to give a shout out to Reddit user Ionabike666 for improving the design and usability of our multiband compressor. He suggested mapping all the high and low frequency crossover knobs to macro buttons. This will remove the need of having to press copy value to siblings every time you want to change frequency. But for today's episode, we'll be looking at spectral processing for our bass, which I feel like is best covered by the term spectral effects, basically meaning adding effects to your sound in a set spectral boundary. So we have our bass soloed here with our multiband compressor. But we want to make this bass a little more interesting, so we'll throw on our EQ3. But this time we'll group it on its own by clicking the grey bar around the EQ3 and pressing Command G. And just like with the multiband compressor, we'll show the chain list and double our chain. But this time we'll only need two chains, so we'll only double it once. Let's name the top one high and the bottom one low by pressing Command R on each and naming them respectively. If we're in the high chain, we'll now toggle off low in our EQ3, so we only have mid and high playing here. Let's go to the low chain and toggle off mid and high. We've now split our bass in low and high frequencies, opening the opportunity of processing the highs without touching the lows. Let's solo the low one time and bring our low frequency crossover knob to the point where we'll almost only hear low bass and sub. I think we'll go with 220 Hz. Let's copy this value to our high chain by right clicking the low frequency crossover knob and pressing copy value to siblings. Now, let's solo our high chain, which is the one we'll be playing with the most today. Great. Now we created a space for ourselves to be creative. This is the fun part. I feel like this tub end could need some movement in space. So I'll try with the chorus effect here. Much more living and breathing. On top of that, I think I'll add a reverb. And remember to post these effects inside the boundaries of our audio effect rack. If we post them outside of it, will affect the whole signal, which is the exact opposite of what we want to achieve. But let's unsolo our high chain and hear it one time while adjusting our reverb. Okay, I think we got it. But I feel like we've lost a lot of signal to that reverb. So let's just put a utility right next to the reverb and give it a couple of dBs. Now, everything is game here. I know a lot of people are scared of putting very altering effects on their basses because it'll diffuse their sub bass frequencies. But with this technique you won't have to be, since we've singled out frequencies that are free of charge to process. You could make endless effects like this, for example saturation, flanging, delay, phaser, or even the frequency shifter. And it's not only useful on bass. Say if you have a pad with a nice mid-range frequency, but you want to switch up the high end, this tip is perfect. Or if you want a spicy drum bus with distortion in the mid-range. But that's it for part 2 of the EQ3 tutorial in the Ableton Live Survival Guide series. I hope to see you all in episode 3. Oh, and in case you haven't noticed, I've got a website. It's called PlateauMix.com. If you or anyone you know needs a radio-ready mix and master, don't be afraid to reach out to me. I'd love to hear what you're working on. I'll give you a free mix check and let you know how your track can be improved. The link is in the description. And thank you for watching everyone, and let me know if this worked out for you. I appreciate the support. Bye.